Okay, cool. Thanks, Kenneth. <clears throat> yeah, hi. Hello. My name is uh, JP Lear, and I'm a member of technical staff for software development in the uh, Rockham OpenMP compiler team here at, a at AMD. And uh, today, I'm, I want to talk about the AMD AOMP open source OpenMP compiler for, for AMD GPUs. Uh, so let's, let's see. Uh, first, as a disclaimer, the information uh, presented in this document is for informational purposes only and may contain technical inaccuracies, omissions, or typographical errors, or may change. So uh, just the information is provided as is. So right, just to get this out of the way. OK. So now in this presentation, um, what I want to do is I want to first give a high-level overview of the, the Rockham software stack uh, before we actually look into AOMP uh, with its software dependencies. And then uh, we're going to dive a little more into how AOMP compilation and linking process works and how the AOMP architecture actually looks like to finally walk through a, a pretty like simple example of an OpenMP target offload code uh, and what the compiler and the runtime would actually need to do. So let's let's start off with the with the Rockham software stack. Rockham is the open software platform for GPU compute. The platform is built for flexibility and performance and gives you access to the open compute languages, compilers, libraries, and tools designed to accelerate code development and solve the toughest challenges uh, challenges in the world today, right? According to the website. Uh, so with all these com uh, components, Rackham is a pretty complex software ecosystem. And uh, we're first going to look in, into how these are, are organized. Um, if you would actually want to install uh, Rackham, uh, the Rackham software stack. Um, and then first at this or at this point, a brief disclaimer, I am not a packaging engineer for the Rackham software ecosystem. Okay. Uh, so, but, but I want to have a quick walkthrough here of the actual packages that are provided for the, for the installation. Um, but since I'm working on the uh, OpenMP comp uh, offload compiler, uh, I will focus on the OpenMP part. Okay. So here, uh, this slide gives you uh, an overview of the different meta packages that you can actually install uh, for the operating uh, from the operating system packages. So right at the bottom. Um, we have the hardware, hardware platform that is for example, AMD Instinct accelerators. And then on top we have uh, the actual operating system. So for example, Red Hat or OpenSUSE or, or Ubuntu. And then right above, uh, we actually have the drivers, uh, meaning the, the kernel GPU driver or probably better known as the KFD driver. Um, so this is actually independent of whether you're actually using the, the meta packages for the Rockham uh, release, or as we will see later, the AOMP um, standalone installation procedure. And then sitting on top of the kernel GPU driver, we have uh, the, the runtime or actual like multiple runtimes. Um, so, so at the lower level run, we actually have the Rockham language runtime. And on top of that, we have different language runtimes for, for HIP or for OpenCL or for OpenMP. And so when we're going further up the stack, we're moving into the, into the Rockham software development kits and the developer tools. And then this is where we have libraries and compilers or, or um, uh, partly debuggers in, in my point of view. Um, and then, but if we, and then if we even go even further up um, the software stack, then we go to like uh, high level libraries for like machine learning and, and machine learning SDKs and then developer tools. So here we actually cl classify developer tools, um, including debuggers, but yeah, anyway. So, so for this talk, uh, we're actually mainly concerned with, with AUMP and, uh, I typically think of AOMP as a like faster paced development preview OpenMP compiler um, for, of which the features will at some point like trickle down into, into Rockham. 
Um, and then, so this is basically here, right? OpenMP. Um, but now to, to give an idea of why meta packages are used, um, let's let's look at the next slide that outlines what are like actual components are uh, pulled in in the respective meta packages. Let me just briefly answer the door real quick here. I'll be back in a second. Apologies for that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so let's look at the at the actual packages that are uh, pulled in um, via those meta packages. So this slide shows the actually so-called associated packages. And what that means is that if we look at the Rock'em Open and PSDK meta package, for example, um, <clears throat> we see that it will actually pull in a number of packages for, uh, for example, the, the Rockham uh, <clears throat> the, the core, Rockham LLVM, and the OpenMP Extras devil package, right? Um, in addition, it will pull in the, the Rockham language runtime package. Um, and that is, again, a meta package. So this will be resolved to the HSA Rocker runtime and the Rock and Core package and the ComGR package and the OpenMP Extras runtime package, right? <clears throat> so uh, there's there's a lot going on here. But now looking at this picture, we can actually see that that many of the other components of the Rock and software stack aren't required for the OpenMP work, right? And as we see later, the AOMP build scripts won't even pull in a lot of uh, the other Rockham components, right? Um, and so since I talk a lot about Rockham and sometimes mention AUMP, uh, let's look at the two and understand what they are like in particular, how they relate to each other and 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 then also to, to LLVM, right? So, in my vocabulary, sort of, Rockham means specifically the AMD open source platform for GPU compute. So it consists of all the like libraries and tools and is the thoroughly tested, let's call it released product uh, by AMD. And then on the other hand, uh, AOMP is an open source compiler and runtime for OpenMP target offload. Uh, it is updated much more frequently as we actually mirror the source code to GitHub um, typically multiple times a day, right? Um, and, and I think of a, a AOMP as sort of, as I said, a preview version of what may trickle down into the OpenMP compiler as part of the Rockham uh, software stack. Now, as a side note, uh, AOMP does not go through all of the Rockham release testing. So, um, in AOMP, you may see things regress on one day and get back to the expected results the next day. So it's much more like living on, on head, right? Compared to like LVM upstream head. And then uh, finally, we also have um, mainline LVM or what I will also call uh, upstream, right? Uh, so this is like the LVM project, a uh, GitHub LVM project um, uh, part. And so AOMP is an LVM fork that is both ahead and behind upstream. Um, and so we have um, we have started to put much more effort into upstreaming or at least proposing changes uh, into mainline LVM. Um, and even though I'm not going to talk about that here uh, too much, uh, our our team is also very active in upstreaming OpenMP offload support for the LVM Flang project. And so in, in summary, uh, Rockham is sort of the AMD open source compute platform, and AOMP is an open source open open MP compiler that can be looked at sort of a preview version of what may come to Rockham for open MP support. And then there's LLVM mainline, which is the open source community uh, developed um, uh, compiler to which AMD is actively contributing to. Mm. 
Now let's let's uh, get some jargon that I will be using throughout the talk uh, out of the way. And, and I just want to make sure that we understand the same things when I when I use these words. As I said, upstream is mainline LLVM project, right? Then when I talk about a host, it's a host machine. So for example, an AMD Epic processor based server. And then a target device or an, a, a device or a target is an attached accelerator. So for example, an AMD Instinct MI200 GPU. Then we have a host runtime that is the OpenMP runtime uh, for the host functionality. So think of libomp. And then there's libomp target. Um, that is the, the runtime component of the OpenMP host functionality that takes care of dispatching work from the host to the device. Um, but it is itself running on the host. Then there is the target or device runtime uh, that actually implements runtime functionality uh, on the device. And it's, as the name suggests, uh, mainly, if not, not all of it, is actually running on the device. And then an important concept is a plugin, which is a vendor-specific implementation of functionality required by libomp target to execute a kernel on the device. Um, and then a kernel is an OpenMP target region, mainly like a piece of code that is compiled for and executed on the device. And then you may hear me use the words queue and signal, um, but I will not try to like go into any particular like detail here. However, should I use these terms, I am likely to refer to HSA concepts that are part of the lowest layer of the AUMP implementation. And that means that it is the HSA runtime talking directly to the to the like Brockage language language runtime. Okay. So now that we have a somewhat clear picture of what AOMP is in the light of the Rockham software stack, let's look at AOMP itself, um, where you can get it and how you can build it and what you can use it for. Okay, so AOMP is an open source OpenMP compiler that specifically targets AMD GPUs. Um, you can download it at GitHub, and I put this QR code there. Um, so that will take you directly to the repository. Now, AOMP is based on LLVM Clang, um, as it is a fork thereof, and tracks upstream pretty closely. So AOMP is typically just a few hours behind upstream, though it may drop to a day in case we have to work around certain upstream patches that would break downstream functionality. Um, so added downstream functionality uh, as of now includes both optimizations and additional features. One of the most important additions in AUMP for, for our users is um, actually are much faster reductions when compared to upstream LLVM. Uh, and an additional, uh, actual additional feature is the OMPT, that is the OpenMP Tools Interface uh, functionality for the device side callbacks and tracing uh, that is available in, in AOMP, but not yet in upstream. At least at the time I put this presentation together, um, and this is still true, we, we had several patches up for review and were reworking uh, parts of the implementation to better fit the upstream needs. Um, so so o, uh, OMPT is coming to upstream at some point. Uh, we currently also have some bug fixes only downstream, though we actually really try to submit fixes to upstream instead of applying them to a a AOMP only. Um, however, the, depending on the area of the code, the divergence between downstream AOMP and upstream LLVN can actually make it pretty challenging to determine a particular fix for, for, for a bug. Um, and finally, AOMP comes with Fortran support, now, currently that is provided via classic flang, uh, but our team focuses on moving the LVM flang project forward and enable target offload support there. And this is all done upstream, by the way. So the whole Fortran uh, work is, is, is done upstream. So if you are curious 
about AOMP, uh, you can you can go to GitHub and download it. Now, the AOMP repository itself does not contain the actual LLVM sources, uh, but a number of scripts and config files to build AOMP from source. Um, it is a standalone in the sense that it requires only the, the KFD, the, the GPU kernel driver, and uh, libdrm to be installed on the system. Uh, this is actually also isolated from, from Rockham installations via custom install prefix, and it uses our path on the runtime libs. Uh, so that we can actually find our, our, our own libs. And this makes it possible to use a local AOMP installation on a system uh, that has a Rockham release installed. Uh, so for example, on my local development machine, I have a Rockham installation to have access to the, to the management tool like Rockham SMI and, and for certain uh, functionality checks that I want to run, but actually build and develop in a separate AOMP installation. Uh, now, building AOMP from source involves building some some required Rockham components like the Rocker runtime uh, that actually provides the HSA implementation. Um, and we will look a little more into detail at the various components on the next two slides. However, in case you do not want to build from source, you can find distribution packages on the AOMP GitHub for CentOS 7 to 9 and slash 15 SP4, as well as for Ubuntu 2004 and 2204. Now, <clears throat> getting back to the to the Rockham components mentioned earlier, uh, AOMP includes a variety of Rockham components. Uh, for example, the Rock GDB or the Rocker runtime, uh, to keep track of the correct versions of the dependencies for a specific AOMP version, we actually use a manifest file that encodes the component, the repository, and the tag or SHA uh, of that report, uh, repository that should be pulled in. So for example, AOMP lives on a particular Rockham release branch um, for, for most of the components that will only change for a new Rockham release, right? Um, however, uh, sometimes it is actually necessary to update to a more recent commit or tag to get a needed bug fix. Um, and so for, for AOMP's own point releases, the manifest file is created separately so that it is available for future builds. Uh, in addition to, to the manifest file and for each component, the AOMP repository actually has a build script that builds that particular component in a configuration that is suitable for AOMP uh, by setting the right CMake flags and installing it into the uh, AOMP install prefix. So here's an example of um, a manifest file. And in line 20, uh, for example, oh, this is here. It's potentially a little hard to read for you. Um, but, but the file specifies that for the remote uh, rock tools and the path rock profiler with the component name rock profiler, the revision to pull in is uh, the tag rockem-5.4.3. Now, this means that we pull in the Rockham 5.4.3 release version of Rock Profiler to build the particular AOMP version. And on the other hand, for the Rockham device libs, uh, that is line 14, so a little further up here, uh, we use the public remote of the Radeon Open Compute on GitHub and pull in the branch AMD STG Open uh, with a particular revision listed there. Now, this may be updated more frequently to sync the development um, between the device libs and the AOMP compiler. Okay, so as we are now somewhat familiar with the with the Rockham uh, software stack and how to obtain and build the AOMP compiler, we can now look into uh, the compilation process and the device plugin architecture and how an actual OpenMP target of the program executes on the device. The compilation process uh, actually requires code generation for both the host and for the device 
so that means the compiler is actually invoked twice uh, for the different uh, LLVM calls as target triplets. Um, <clears throat> so if we consider a C or C++ OpenMP application, uh, we can now follow the compilation process to go into a device tool chain, meaning that we first create a device IR, uh, which is intermediate represent representation, which is then put into the device assembler, uh, which creates the uh, device object. If we are looking at the bottom of this picture, the same code uh, goes into the, the host IR and then into the host object. Now, finally, uh, both object files are bundled together in what is typically referred to as a FAT binary. Uh, now, in that FAT binary, we still have code for the host and for the device that we need to take care of separately in the subsequent uh, link step. Now, the linking process requires to generate one host image and an embedded device executable. So we start with the FAT binary and first unbundle it into the device and the host objects again. The device object is moved um, through potentially device-specific tools to create a device executable. And that device executable is wrapped into a correct ELF image. Uh, the linker then creates a correctly linked host executable in which it embeds the ELF image that contains the different images for each device kernel. There we go. Uh, so those images can later be loaded in the libom target plugins and be executed on the specific device. Now, as part of that, it also links any required libraries uh, such as libom target and, and others uh, like uh, libc++ and everything, right? Now, uh, while I do understand the, the, the process to some extent, uh, I'm not the primary expert for all technical details of the linking process uh, and of this like whole driver stuff. So in case you have questions about this later on, I'll certainly try to answer them, but I may not know the answer. Okay, and then moving from the compilation and linking process to the execution time, uh, the process is roughly as follows. So the executable starts like any other program on the host. The regular loader will load it and invoke main for C, C++ applications. Uh, in addition to uh, the application and its other dependencies, it has the OpenMP runtime library and uh, libom target libraries as dependencies. Now, when libom target is initialized, it will look for the so-called plugins. Uh, these vendor-specific implementations are then used to separate common code, which is in libom target, from platform-specific code, for example, the, uh, the, the one for AMD GPUs. And now when the application hits a target region, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, hits a, a target region, libom target dispatches the, the so-called kernel launch to the plugin. Uh, the plugin then uses the, the function name to open the device image uh, that was embedded into the executable, look up the pointer uh, to the code and load it. Then it initializes a kernel launch of that pointer using the particular launch uh, configuration to obey uh, any user-specific number of threads and similar requests made through the OpenMP API. And finally, uh, the kernel executes on the device and the plugin deinitializes uh, if required after the kernel finished. Uh, should the kernel be, for example, a reduction, it may use helper functions on the device that are provided via the device runtime. Now, this is similar to things like the libc or libm, a library that provides implementations for commonly, uh, for, for common and required operations, and then on the device via standardized interface. Um, now, I've mentioned the plugin a couple of times uh, without ever showing what, it's, what it is or where in the stack it actually sits. So let's look at, at the plugin a little closer. The AMD GPU plugin is the vendor-specific, uh, meaning AMD-specific part of Libum target. Um, and so if you look at the picture, we see that we have the hardware sitting at the bottom with uh, the driver and the HSA runtime sitting on top of it. Now, HSA stands for Heterogeneous System Architecture, 
and it is a standard maintained by the HSA Foundation. The, the standard provides an interface to interact with heterogeneous systems that are composed of multiple agents uh, that can talk to each other. Now, in addition to, to the standard functionality, AMD provides some extensions that are used in the AMD GPU plugin, uh, for example, to profile certain calls or to prepare memory regions for data transfers between host and device. Uh, the, the AMD GPU plugin is built on top of the HSA runtime, right? So it makes use of HSA locked or pinned memory for higher performance data transfers between host and device. It uses the what's called HSA signals and queues to launch kernels and data transfers and manages dependencies between these signals to take care of asynchronous uh, events. For most of the open uh, OMPT profiling support, it uses the HSA profiling extensions to read the timings for specific signals and reports them to the OMPT client. Um, maybe, maybe one more as a note, uh, HSA is pretty low level and should be used with some caution, um, mainly meaning that it is suited to implement a run runtime system but probably less well suited to implement higher level application logic. Uh, although nothing would technically like stop you from creating signals and writing them, uh, writing them to HSA yourself. And here we see that the OMP plugin is actually uh, sitting on top of HSA and is queried by the, by the target runtime uh, and then dispatches into the uh, HSA runtime. Now, finally, uh, with all those things said, let's look at a simple OpenMP example program and what it would look like when executing on an AMD GPU after being uh, compiled with AOMP. Uh, so we start with a C++ application that does not have any OpenMP annotation in it, right? It creates a stack array and initializes uh, its entries with zero. Then it loops over the array and assigns each entry the value one. It then prints the values in order and finally returns zero to indicate all went well. Now, when we add the OpenMP pragma, this means the following. Um, target means offload the following block uh, to a device. Teams distribute is distribute the work across teams of threads. And parallel four is the work share, uh, work share the iterations of the following for loop across the team of threads. And then we have this map vals, which actually creates a data environment for that target region by applying the respective data movement. Uh, if you were to leave out the specifier in the map class, uh, this defaults to the now highlighted to from specifier. That means that the data environment shall be created by moving the data of the vals array from the host to the device before launching the kernel uh, region, that is two. And then after the kernel finished, moving the data from the device version uh, of the vals array back to the host version of the vals array, that is the word from. Basically, copy the array, change its values, and copy the changed values back. So putting it together, we can think of the code um, as, as this code actually executes on the device. <clears throat> and then in, in the lib on target, this code will actually hit the following markers. First, you do a data submit that is copying the data to the device, followed by a run region that is actually execute the kernel on the device, followed by a final data retrieve, uh, copying the data back from the device. Inside the data submit, libom target would also create a mapping, uh, a mapping table to track which areas of memory are mapped to the device and which device pointers are assigned to a particular region. Uh, so this list is reference counted and should reference count for, for a particular device storage go to zero, the device storage may be freed. And uh, I see I'm actually running almost over time. So uh, I'm actually finished here. I just want to like wrap it up. Um, so in summary, AOMP is an open source compiler for OpenMP target offload based on Clang LLVM. It supports C and C++ and Fortran 
and is much more frequently merged to the public GitHub uh, instance than Rockem releases. Features are typically merged into future Rockem releases, though understand this as a features may go into Rockem. Uh, compared to upstream LVM, AOMP offers some more optimizations and features. And however, we're actively working on reducing the delta uh, and would like to upstream more of the currently only downstream changes. Uh, in general, AOMP provides a standalone compiler that can be built using the scripts provided in the repository and actually only requires the KFD driver and libdrm to be installed on the system as it pulls in the other required components and builds them from source. And with that, uh, thank you so much for your attention. I hope you found a piece of information interesting for you. Now I'd like to open it up for, for questions. Okay, thanks a lot, JP. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and yes. clear. All right. Do we have any questions in the room? Yeah, can you come up here? That's going to be easy. A bit backwards, but... Yeah, um, thank you for the talk. Just I have one question uh, because I, I noticed the other day that in PC13 they also added support for uh, offload to uh, the newer AMD CPUs uh, for OpenMP. I'm, I'm wondering if the TCC OpenMP is in any way related to AOMP or is it a completely independent project? Uh, so let's say I'm I'm not aware. Uh, of like that we that we um, add to that. Um, I know there is a GCC. Well, so we are in touch um, with a contractor that like puts into uh, puts offloading capabilities into GCC, as far as I know. Um, but I'm not like 100 percent sure how much that is, and the runtimes, as far as I understand, are developed separately. Um, although people are talking to each other. So I guess that's the, the best answer I can give us. I, I think there is talks. Uh, this might be actually related, but I'm not completely sure. Thank you. Other questions? Oh, wait. They want to unmute themselves or? We have some questions in the Zoom. Not in Zoom. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll repeat the question. It's basically the same questions, sort of. So by Thomas and, and Lars in, um, in the easy and the EUM SPAC channel. SPAC channel. Slack channel, very nice. Um, so Thomas was asking, I'll just I'll not read the whole question. Um, maybe this is too technical, but if I want to test my code on some machine using the AMD compilers and the test machine has Intel CPUs and no AMD GPUs, does the license allow me to test my code on my desktop or CI system? Or am I not allowed, not allowed to install the software stack there? Because step zero is making sure that I can build with the compiler before I go anywhere near testing, offloading, and so on. I'm not completely sure I understand the question actually, um, just because I'm, I, l l let me say, I'm not aware of any legal issues installing AOMP on your machine, maybe but I'm also not a legal person. Maybe this applies to AOCC because there are some restrictions there. Th this may be true, but AO so AOCC is um, different from AOMP. Um, if you were to have an AOCC installation on the system, I believe that uh, AOMP would pick up any proprietary uh, like optimization passes that you may have installed and use it. However, if you just go to GitHub and download AOMP, um, it's, it's there to be used. It's open source and it's released under the license that is available in the, in the repository. And then the largest question is somewhat related. Um... So he was going to ask if Rockham worked on consumer GPUs or is it playing at home? And then he said he just found out that some Arctic 6000 series card got, got partial support about two weeks ago. 
it's a bit of a road bump to, road bump to adoption and you can't play around with it much. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure how, how I'm going to answer that. Um, let, let's say, so I, for my, for my development machine, I have an RX 6800 uh, desktop card here. Um, I believe for AOMP, you can use a lot of desktop cards. Uh, what, I've, what I find very helpful is on the, um, if, if you look for the LLVM documentation of the AMD GPU backend, it will actually list uh, like numerous AMD devices um, and their um, what we call GFX numbers. So like the, the code version, uh, not the code version, the, uh, yeah, the architecture, the, the actual uh, device architecture. Um, and it, within our CMakes, you will see all the GFXs that we support. Now, I believe the uh, like the non-support that, that you will typically see is a, has a lot to do with the optimized libraries that you will get as part of the Rockham stack. Um, but just for, let's say, using an OpenMP program and compiling it with AOMP for a device where would actually the GFX number would actually be supported from our CMake, you should get an executable program. Now, if it doesn't work, um, there may be differences. For example, um, uh, some of the data center GPUs have what is called the, a wavefront size of 64, whereas consumer cars have a, a size of, a width of 32. Um, but when we encountered them in the past, we fixed them because we use consumer cards for our development as well. So I think it's it's different to say that it, Rockham supports a certain like card or or a certain series of cards and you can like generate code with our OpenMP compiler. I think these are two different things and you should be able to use our stuff on on like many desktop systems. Okay. Any other questions for JP? No, we'll wrap up here. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me.